Hey everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Mountain Beast Mysteries. Today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite Bigfoot stories and that is the story of Albert Ostman. So back in 1924, Albert Ostman was going out to do some prospecting and he was going to head up the Toba Inlet on the west coast of British Columbia. So he hired a local guide who was a First Nations fella and along the way they journeyed up the inlet. Uh, this First Nations man explained to him, or at least tried to explain to him, that there was a race of mountain people living in the area, and he called them Sasquatch. Now, the whole time, Albert Ostman just kind of brushed it off and didn't believe a word this guy was saying, and the man insisted that these people were real and they were legitimate. Um... Albert was supposed to be gone for about 18 days, I think it was. So Albert said goodbye to his guide. He journeyed about 10 miles into the mountains over the course of a few days. He had multiple campsites until he found a campsite that he, he really liked and wanted to make it his permanent camp. So then he could go out from there, do whatever prospecting he wanted to do. It would be kind of like his little, his little base camp. So Albert spent a few nights at this camp and the first night, his equipment was disturbed. So he had initially thought that a porcupine or something was coming into his camp because he'd seen one prior and that was kind of his explanation. The second night the contents of his backpack were strewn all over the place. Now Albert claims that he was a really deep sleeper. You know if it was me I, I sleep pretty light out in the forest so I would have definitely heard something coming into my camp and emptying my backpack out. But yeah, th th so this happened for a few nights and the one night Albert got in his sleeping bag, he had his rifle with him and he had his boots in the bottom of his sleeping bag. Now he claimed that he put his boots in his sleeping bag because porcupines like leather. But yeah, he was ready to, to confront whatever was visiting him in the night and he was trying to stay awake and you know for me when I'm trying to stay awake that's usually when I fall asleep the fastest so Albert fell asleep until out of nowhere in the middle of the night something picked up his sleeping bag with him in it slung it over its shoulder and took off now whatever grabbed him also grabbed his backpack because Albert claimed that as he was moving like he could feel from inside of his sleeping bag, he could feel the backpack beside him, kind of bumping into him. And he was in a very awkward position inside of his sleeping bag, like he couldn't really move around. He said it was very, very uncomfortable. But he had his rifle with him, which was good. He had it in his hands, basically, right in front of him. So he held tightly onto that. Apparently, whatever had him carried him for about three hours. Now, during this time, it kind of clicked in his mind that these wild people or the Sasquatch that his guide had told him about could be, you know, what is carrying him. It was either that or it felt like he was, you know, strapped to a horse or something. But he definitely felt like it was something walking. So after a few hours went by being carried by this creature in a very uncomfortable way, Albert was dropped off. So... When he got out of his sleeping bag, he was very surprised to see that he was in the company of four hominid creatures, and they resemble what we know to be Sasquatch. He said there was a, an older male and an older female, and then two juveniles, a boy and a girl. Now the way Albert talked about these beings, he made them sound more like people, like he would say the old lady or the young boy or the young girl which is kind of strange so it, it relays to us that you know these creatures are a lot more human-like than animal so the whole time albert was with these people which was about six days they were becoming really curious into him and the things he was doing like he had all his gear with him he had his pack and like food items he had his coffee he had a box of snuff mm -hmm. Actually, I think he had a few boxes of snuff. But the whole time, like, the young boy would come over to him. He would be really curious, especially when Albert would put some snuff in his mouth. 
they didn't know what to think of that. But yeah, like six days went by that he was stuck with these people because they wouldn't let him leave. Like they, they would block him if he ever tried to escape. They, they just wouldn't have any of it. But they were really infatuated with the snuff. So the older male on the last day went up to Albert and he was watching him put this snuff in his mouth. So Albert let the creature take some snuff thinking he was just going to put it in his mouth. But the creature took the whole box and he dumped all of the contents into his mouth and swallowed it. And he instantly got sick. Like this thing was like falling over and just in severe pain. He apparently grabbed Albert's coffee that he just made and tried to dump it back as well with the grounds and everything. That didn't help at all. And this creature was just basically like convulsing on the ground. That's when Albert decided to make a run for it. So he had his rifle. He was ready to shoot his way out if he had to. And he took off down this canyon. Now as he's taking off, the female tried to come after him apparently. So he fired a shot of his 30-30 rifle right over her head into the rocks. And that really scared her away and he just took off. And apparently these creatures didn't really come after him. Like he kept running to a point where he, he kind of stopped just to, to see if these creatures would follow and he waited for about two hours. So after waiting there and not seeing anything, he, he kept going and uh, he eventually got away. So back to civilization um, for years, like he did not mention the Sasquatch at all. He just had claimed he'd gotten lost. But yeah, like John Green, he thoroughly interrogated this guy and like did his research and his story never changed at all. Like he maintained till the day he died that that's what happened. So it's a very interesting Sasquatch encounter and probably one of the craziest because this guy got kidnapped and escaped. Like there's a lot of people that go missing in the forests, but you don't usually hear from them again. Because it's a dangerous place, there's wild animals. This guy disappeared, and he made it out, and he had a crazy story to tell. So, I don't know. If it's true, it's crazy. And I also think that, you know, when you're out in the bush for like 18 days, your mind has a lot of time to think up some crazy stuff if you were going to make up a story. But, who knows, I don't know the man i will never know the man because he's he's not with us anymore but it would have been very interesting to talk to him because there's not too many people who have had very close encounters like that and you know it's it's hard enough for one person to have a sasquatch sighting involving one sasquatch this guy saw four of them and not only did he see them but he interacted with them he claims to, to have heard their language because they, they actually speak to each other in like very primitive words. You know, he actually, he lived with them for, for six days and that is pretty amazing. But before this trip, he had no idea what the Sasquatch were apparently. Like that's the interesting thing. He didn't hear about it until he went off with the guide and the guide explained it to him. So it, it's very interesting and the way he describes them just matches everything that we we know and everything that we see today so i i really like these older sasquatch stories from like before bluff creek and before the 50s when the first tracks were casted it's just very interesting stuff um like i when i'm out in the bush alone and i imagine this story like being kidnapped and then like living with sasquatch for like days it really creeps me out that would probably be the scariest thing to ever happen to a person like not knowing what they're gonna do to you like he he didn't really feel i think threatened but he had no idea what these things were he had no idea what they were saying to each other and what their plans were for him so just that feeling of not knowing what their intentions are would be very crazy and you know they're not human they're close to human probably but they're not human they're covered in hair they're extremely large he said the male was over eight feet tall the female around seven feet but just totally built like huge creatures very powerful so like he questioned in his mind if his 30 30 rifle was going to do any damage to these things but he was ready he had 
a couple boxes of shells. Like hopefully that would have been enough to take down the the adult male if he had to, but you know, still I don't condone shooting one, but in that case when you're being held captive, I would probably be doing anything I could to to get out of there. It's a shame he didn't have any kind of camera because those would have been really good photos, you know. An actual photo of four Sasquatch, like a family with adults and the juveniles in one place like that would be very very cool but it'd be interesting to know or to find out where the exact location of this took place you know there's lots of untouched land out on the west coast of bc and a lot of it's hard to access you have to take boats up the inlets so it'd be a very very difficult thing to find but you know I think it's worth a future expedition maybe going up the Toba Inlet and uh, seeing what's out there. I'm sure there's lots of bears so it would be very unsettling that way but who knows. You know it seems to be a very lush area full of life and the perfect place for Bigfoot to exist. So yeah thanks for listening to this episode of Mountain Beast Mysteries. I hope you enjoyed the story. It's one of my favorites. I'll get back to you soon with something else. Thank you.